Welcome to You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker, a podcast to encourage and equip moms along their parenting journey. Join Sarah each week as she interviews dads and moms like you and discusses the joys, challenges, and rewards of raising kids. Hi, and welcome to this week's You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and I'm so glad you joined me. Today I have Dr. Jackie Jones. She has more than a quarter century, that sounds so much, 25 years, that sounds better, (laughs) as a physician and a surgeon. She's the mom of two grown kids, and she has a new book called Medical Parenting, How to Navigate Health, Wellness, and the Medical System with Your Child. And I'm just thrilled that uh, you're going to be on my program. So welcome, Jackie. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. Now, um, as we're recording this, and this will air pretty soon after we record it, um, the, we were just talking about the coronavirus, I don't even know what to call it, mass hysteria, I, I, I'm not sure what the technical term is, has like gripped the country and people are just losing their minds. So, <laughs> and our kids know, can't help but hear yeah. about this. Now, and I was just saying that if I have to see one more meme on social media about washing your hands, I think I might scream because, I mean, we're supposed to wash our hands. I mean, come on, tell me that people are washing their hands. This is, this is like more of a concern to me than, than getting the coronavirus is the fact that people don't know how to wash their hands. What is up with that? <laughs> it is so true, isn't it? We should all have been doing it all along, and this is just a great excuse for people to – to learn how to do hand hygiene. But I know there is a great deal of anxiety right now about the coronavirus. And one thing that we can tell parents is the risk of the coronavirus in children is very, very low. It's, you know, if we look at the population of patients who are infected in China, uh, less than 2% of them were children. And we don't know why children aren't getting the coronavirus, but they're just not. So Mm -hmm. parents can you know, heave a sigh of relief that their children have less risk than anyone of catching this virus. Well, I did not know that, so thank you for, yeah. um, I, I must admit I've been trying to stay away from a lot of the, because I find it, the coronavirus news, because I find it's tinged with with that um, we're all going to die tomorrow kind of yeah. language, and I find that very unhelpful, both as a as a person and as a parent, um, be, because I don't want my kids anxious about getting sick because we, we get sick. I mean, God... And we get better. <laughs> and we get better, yes, we do. You know, we get better. And just this, this, I mean, it's just the fear of getting sick. Now, I must admit that I am not the world's most warm and fuzzy mom when my kids are sick. Um, I'm working <laughs> on it, but... Um, this, I don't even want to talk about this. If a stomach bug comes to my house, I am like a crazy woman with cleaning. And I know I, it's just, that's just the one thing that I really hate. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I really hate that. But, <laughs> but all that to say, you know, but still helping our children to, to, to navigate, you know, a cold or, a, you know, or getting, you know, some sort of virus or something. You know, how do we help our children, you know, deal with being sick? Do you have any, I'm sure you have some advice. You're a doctor. (laughs) (laughs) I do. And I think, Sarah, you brought up such a great point about not being like a warm and fuzzy mom when your kids are sick. And we all want to be supportive of our kids when they're sick. But we also have to teach our kids resilience. And resilience Mm. is learning how to take care of yourself and learning how to get on with life. So when we're sick, we have to realize we're sick. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to eat well. We have to sleep. But then we also have to realize that, okay, I'm feeling better. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to do what needs to be done. And that's an important lesson for our kids to learn, that life does go on. You can get sick, Mm. but then you can feel better, and you can move on. That's a really, really important point that you brought up about resilience and strength. Right, and I think that, um, you know, we realize that some children, I think they feel the effects of illness a little more keenly than others. Um, I know I have four children, and if I look at, I mean, they all react to illness is different. One of them is like, yeah, I'm sick, or I don't, I have a cold, and so, you know, I'm just going to power through. I'm fine. The other one's like, I have a cold, I'm dying. 
know, um, like, you know, you just have a cold. It's okay. Yes, I know you feel, let's, let's try some over-the-counter stuff. We, you know, we can help with this. Um, but it is, I think, kind of a helping them to realize, you know, a cold is really not going to put them under for weeks at a time. They can, there are things they can do while they're snuff, snuffly. And also to say, you know, you really need to stay home because you're running a fever. Let's not infect the whole, you know, pre-calc class because you don't want to miss a test. Um, it's that kind of balance that I find, you know, kind of difficult, especially as the kids get older and you don't always notice that they're sick until maybe they're really sick. Yes, and especially with our adolescents, they, they tend to, to try and power through it. And that's such a good point about not going to school when you're sick, not going to work when you're sick, and giving your sh- yourself a chance to, to heal. You know, we talked about resilience, but we also t- need to talk a little bit about common sense. For those mm. of us who have lived through those 10th and 11th and 12th grade years where our kids are so stressed about yes. what's coming forward in life, and helping them to realize it's okay to take a day off. So there is a balance between learning how to take care of yourself. And I think that goes back to younger kids too. And in my book, Medical Parenting, I talk about setting up a routine early on, like when your kids are three and four and five, and learning to relax together. So you know how we all read our kids' books at night? Well, maybe after that book, let's spend five minutes just meditating together. And it doesn't even have to be meditating. It's just maybe closing our eyes together and learning how to relax and let that day go. If if we teach our kids these skills early on in life, when it comes to the time where stress is just overwhelming, 10th, 11th, Mm -hmm. and 12th grade, or a situation like this where, you know, the media is talking about, you know, everyone getting sick and, you know, being deathly ill, learning how to deal with that, that, that anxiety and feeling comfortable with yourself is such an important tool to learn. So um, one thing I think that we struggle with as parents is, you know, knowing how to talk to our kids about, a, you know, not to dismiss them as being, you know, when, they feel, when they're feeling bad, and maybe they don't have a fever or they don't have anything that's really kind of easily identifiable by Dr. Mom, who's not really a doctor, you know, but <laughs> we, all, we all have to do a little <laughs> bit of that, you, you know, Absolutely. because, you, I mean, you can't take your child to the doctor for every, I mean, I certainly can't you know, <laughs> for every single little thing. So you kind of have to do that little mini triage at your home. Are you really that sick? Hmm, what's going on? Have you eaten today? That may be why you have a headache. Yeah. You know, have you drunk in any water? You know, that kind of kind of thing. Um, you know, but there are some kids who, you know, everything is, you're not, maybe they tend to over-exaggerate all their symptoms. So um, do you have any wisdom for how moms, you know, or dads can kind of navigate that, you know, that kind of gray area where you're like, I don't know, what should I do? Because <laughs> Google is not always our friend. I mean, Google can be like the worst uh, really? thing to do. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And, you know, my, in my book, I talk a lot about that, that you oh, really good. can't trust the Internet. You know, and the Internet is a blessing and it's a curse. And there's a lot of information there, but it's really not filtered. So Googling, yeah. you know, headache, and, you know, in a kid, you know, probably number three is brain tumor. Well, probably it's not number three. It's probably right. number four. 15, so, or 20, or 25, you know. Right, you right. You really need to use common sense. So I think for especially new moms and dads, it's hard to put that in perspective. Like, how do I judge this? How do I know what's important? And that's one of the things that I talk about in my book, Medical Parenting, is developing that relationship early on with your pediatrician, especially as a first-time parent. Spending some time when your kid is is healthy so you can learn what the warning signs are that you need to call the Mm. pediatrician about. What are the things, you know, you remember when you had your first child, every burp, every change in their bowel habits is an emergency. And if they sneeze, oh, my God, you know, it's life-threatening. So spending the time early on in those first visits with your pediatrician and learning what's important and what should you call about and what are the warning signs 
that's really how you develop a relationship, and that's how we grow as parents and having that strong relationship and that, that sense of trust and information with our pediatrician. Yeah, and that's, that's really great advice, um, you know, to, you know, especially for first-time parents. Um, yeah, because everything can be a crisis <laughs> sometimes. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah, unfortunately. You know, you do get that panic, um, even though part of your brain is like, oh, really, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but it's your baby, <laughs> and you don't know. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think the when as you were talking, the other thing that kind of came to me, and I and I think I see that um, the medical profession as a whole has been more open to this is to listen more listening to moms. You know, when we bring our kid in and we say, yeah, you know, to really sit, to not dismiss us, um, even first time moms with our fears, but to really kind of I think I I feel like people listen more. Um, you know. Or maybe, you know, when they have, maybe it's something that you think may be wrong with your baby. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But that, you know, I think there seems to be a better um, listening to moms and not just thinking, oh, you read something on the Internet and you're crazy, so we're not going to just, we're not even going to listen to what your concerns are. Um, do you find that true in your profession, you know, that pe- that doctors are, are you may, they don't have to, like, you know, agree with the mom, I'm saying, but just that kind of more of a listening, um, you know, gentle correction rather than I'm the doctor and you're just not right <laughs> kind of thing. I think there's something yeah, to that mom's intuition. An, it's such an important point that you bring up, Sarah, because I think it's really important as a parent to – find the right pediatrician that's going to listen to you. Right. And you know, after four kids, you have that parent intuition, and you know when your kid is really sick and when mm-hmm. something is going on. And I think that's a really important point, to find a pediatrician who is going to listen to you. So I, I, in my book, Medical Parenting, I talk a lot about choosing the right pediatrician. Okay, it's yeah. It's really important. If you're not clicking with that pediatrician, it's okay to leave them. It's okay to find someone who is a good fit for you. Because I think the doctor, I mean, as a doctor, you, I mean, you don't want to be constantly at loggerheads with your patient, you know, if it's absolutely not a good fit. Not. No, absolutely not. And I know not everyone's going to be the best fit for me, and I'm okay with that. But one of the skills that I really have tried to develop is to really listen and develop that relationship with the parent where, you know, they're listening to me and I'm listening to them. And that's something you have to work on as a parent to develop that relationship. It's a two-way relationship. Oh, it is. And I think also, you know, I think we can help doctors, you know, in, you know, to become better doctors. I remember when I, when my, my um, third child who happened to be my first boy, I had two girls and then two boys. He, um, when I took him to six months appointment, he hadn't, he was exact same weight as he was at his four month appointment, but he had grown two inches <laughs> he just like hit yeah. this growth spurt and they just they were all like the doctor just was fixated on the weight and I just pointed out I tried to be doing I said and of my third kid I'm like he's gonna be fine we just started him on solid foods you know he's thriving I think he's gonna be okay and I was we were able to have a good conversation because I pointed out I said but he grew two inches and she was like oh you know <laughs> he's oh, yeah. growing exactly. he just grew so fast he he just looks so skinny because <laughs> he's like shot up instead of out. Um, I said I'll I'll bring him back. You know he's gonna be fine. You know it was hard with the other two kids at home to come in. They wanted me to come in like every day for a weigh in. I was like I can't. And he's gonna be okay. He's eating. He just started. So we were able to have that conversation. I think that just kind of underscores the importance that we have as parents to speak up and also have that good relationship with our with our doctors. Um, so that we can kind of remind them, hey, you know, let's, let's not always look at the numbers. Let's look at the kid. Let's look at the whole picture here. And um, I think that can just be so helpful to have those conversations. You know, it's such an important point that you bring up, Sarah, in knowing, you know, what's right for you. And I think that's really important for parents to pick a pediatric practice that's going to fit what they need. You know, healthcare is evolving, and in many parts of the country, you know, you really only have the choice of these 
big pediatric practices where there mm-hmm. may be, you know, eight or nine or even ten uh, pediatricians. Now, the advantage of that sort of practice is there's always someone available. The disadvantage is you may not always see the same doctor. So if you're the type of parent who really needs to develop that strong relationship with one pediatrician, that may not be the practice for you. You may need to opt for a smaller practice or you know, even if you have the luxury of doing a concierge practice where you're always going to see the same physician. So mm-hmm. knowing what works for you at your stage, you know, as first-time parents, we may really need that strong relationship. After your fourth kid, you know you got this. So yeah, yeah you may not need that. So. <laughs> right, that is so true, Jackie. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'm like, yeah, okay, you know. Um, yeah, so that. we are um, we are coming to the end of our time. So is there any other things we really need to know about? Um, I mean, I don't hate to mention the coronavirus again, but is there anything we need to know about? You know, I mean, just how to. Um, you know, how to help our kids. Um, we talked a little bit about the anxiety part of it, but any kind of other practice besides wash your hands, people, okay? Really, happy birthday, lots of soap, hot water, <laughs> right? Am I missing anything? <laughs> Backs of your no, hands, your fun. thumbs. I'm like, come on, do your whole hand. <laughs> Needs to be no, washed. I, oh. I, I think one of the important things is our children model our behavior, and they mm. see so much from us. So taking care of yourself, eating well, exercising, yes, washing your hands, but also trying to control your anxiety in this world where anxiety is just around us. I think our kids smell our anxiety. So Mm. trying to keep that under control, modeling to your kids that you really do have this, that you know, the world is going to be okay, and we're going to move through this together, and mom and dad are here, or, or moms are here, or dads are here, and we're here for you, and we're going to be okay. And I think that's a really important message to send to our kids in this time of great anxiety. No, I agree, and I love that what you said about modeling. I find that, you know, as, you know, especially as my kids got older, you know, it was important for them to see, you know, my husband and I, you know, trying to eat well, you know, exercising, you know, going to the doctor when we were sick, you know, not trying to power through, you know. <laughs> you know, my husband staying home from work when he, you know, had a fever and that kind of thing to really help them see, yeah, it's okay to have a day off every once in a while. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to have rest days and to build that into our family schedule um, as well so that we do have time to relax as a family um, and just talk about things too. Um, you know. So, so important. And you know as kids get older how important that is to be there for them and to talk to them. Yes. Well, that is a great way to end our show. I'm sure we could talk more. I have more questions, but uh, I'll have to hold them for another time. But thank you again for being on my show, Jackie. Well, I so enjoyed it. Thank you so much. You've been listening to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamerker. And today I've been talking with Dr. Jackie Jones. She has more than 25 years' experience as a physician and a surgeon. She's also a mom of two grown kids. And her new book, Medical Parenting, um, has a lot of tips and advice on how to navigate health, wellness, in the medical system with your child. I think um, this is a book that's going to be so helpful for many families. You can find out more about her in the bio with this uh, podcast, and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast of You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker. Sign up to receive notification of new podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhamaker.com. Until next time, remember, parenting might be hard sometimes, but don't worry, you've got this.